welcome to episode 5 of series 2 of Master League Story Mode. Now we're getting well into the transfer window now. We need to make some signings too. Tomorrow we are up against David Moyes. What an interesting narrative that is. Alex Ferguson back up against the man who took over for him at United and things didn't go quite as well as maybe either of them would have liked. But anyway, that is for tomorrow. Let's quickly remind ourselves where we are in terms of transfers. We signed Jesse Lingard. Jesse. We Jesse. Sorry, that's, that, was, that was a bit much. But yeah, we've signed Jesse Lingard. He's going to come straight into the team, I think, at right midfield. Happy to bring him in there. Uh, Diamandi, who he did have in right midfield, is actually quite a capable uh, striking replacement. He's 74 overall rated, so um be happy to play him. Okay, let's just remind ourselves where we are with the negotiation. So we've got a few players we can sell. I'm going to start making some moves now. Embakani did not prove himself in his first game. He missed a lot of chances. Cashing on on him for 13 million could be a, a decent way to go. Davis, we're not selling. Mailer for seven. I think we can get rid of him. We've got a lot of central midfield players. Um, we can see if we can get any more money for him. Mm, probably not. All right, we'll take the plunge on Mailer. We just want to make sure that we've got the funds when we need them. So that's another one going out. 21 million. That's looking a little bit, a little bit better there. El Mahamedy. Probably worth keeping around. He's a good backup right back uh, with Fossu Mensa coming in. Uh, Maloney as well. It's another player that we don't want. Don't know if we've tried to negotiate again here. Yeah, we can get a bit more money for him possibly. Let's take a look at the players that we've been dealing with. Depay for 2 million. I think we've agreed that is too much. We're not going to go for him. Although it is tempting. Uh, I think we could probably spend that money better elsewhere. So no for Depay. Bojan for 12 million, that's a lot of money for him. And uh, I don't think we need a, an imposing striker rather than another diminutive one because I think we could do better in terms of second strikers. So we'll, we'll, we'll end that there. Nambula. Don't know if we can get any more money off that. No. No. So I think that might be about as good as we can get. We're cashing in Tom Huddleston for basically 7.5 million, which is probably about what we would have got from anyway. So I'm going to pull the trigger there, get these moves done early on. Second signing, complete. That's Mbula coming in to shore up the midfield alongside Ryan Mason. Jesse Lingard, we've already dealt with him. He's coming on loan. And uh, Fosu Mensa, I think for 5 million. That's pretty decent, 4.8. It's a good right back there as well. So there we go. Some dealings have been done. Three players coming in. A good right back, good central midfielder. We've got Lingard out on the right. Now we're just looking for that striker. Uh, so let's go and revisit the scouts. We had Anaki Williams. Um, we definitely want to have a look at him. He's quick, but he's lacking in a few areas. He's he's a decent finisher. Um, he can play as a second striker. He can play up the top as well. Um, we'll, we'll we'll have a look and see how much he comes back for as well. Cabela, I think we're going to make a bid for. I'm hoping for something a little bit better than that, but we want that sort of playmaking second striker. And it looks like Cabela. It was a bit of a flop at Newcastle, but has come into his own a bit since going back to France. Um, he'd be a good playmaker to have in there in the what we've called the Wayne Rooney role. Two new players coming in, two players going out. Mailer and Huddleston, two central midfielders, they go out. But we've come in and we've brought in uh, some real quality in Fossu Mensa and in Bula. Let's have a look and see how they slot into the team. Fossu Mensa straight in at right back. I'm happy with that. Oh, Mohamedy definitely goes onto the bench. And in Bula. In central midfield alongside Ryan Mason. I'm happy with that. I'm not sure whether we play him as a defensive or central midfielder. But he's 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 more of a box-to-box -box apparently. So we'll keep him as that for now. And we've got Lingard out on the right. Still got Embakani up front. That's maybe something we want to look to change. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So before we get into this game. And I promise you we will have two games in this episode for the first time. Uh, which will take us nearly, nearly to the end of the transfer window. But not quite to deadline day. Which will uh, take place... On Friday's episode, but uh, for now we've got a few players that you in the comments have suggested. Now, thank you to everyone who's helped me out, who's done a bit of scouting for me, and uh, found some players and some teams using the Tim Sherwood six degrees of Sherwood rule about teams we can deal with. So, have a quick look at these. So, first team is Reading using the Yapstam connection. Now, I'm really sorry, I haven't got time. I'm a bit pushed for time tonight to go through and individually thank you all for the teams and the players you suggested. But you know who you are, so thank you. Tim Sherwood Passion Tokens are rushing their way to all of you right now. But let's have a look at Reading. Now, I'm not particularly uh, under the impression there's going to be any real quality here, but it's worth a look. Uh, McShane, centre-back? Mm, no. 
Chris Gunter Cooper would have been interesting. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to deal with him. But we'll put in a bid anyway. Because he'd be a good backup. Good backup centre back. And uh, he looks like he can. he's going to progress. And potentially we'd get him fairly cheaply. Okay, second team up is Ajax. Now, the connection that we have with Ajax is that uh, Edwin van der Sar is actually the director of marketing at Ajax at the moment. Interesting. So uh, there's definitely a few players we could look at in here that would be uh, real benefits to our squad. Now, Ziyech, we'll, we'll put in a bid for him. That's unlikely. He's going to be expensive, but he could be that creative playmaker, second striker that could really, really perform well for us. Um, he's got everything you need. He's quick, great passer, great finisher. He's a real all-round talent. Um, another option as well could be Klassen. Somehow he's worth three million more. Um, probably not then. Now, Bazaar. He is a really great player. He was incredible for a lot of people's Master Leagues last season in PES 16. I saw him pop up many, many times, and he looks to be a real quality player. He's only 20 years old, box-to-box -box player. He can also play as a centre-back. He's strong. He's a good passer. Um, how much is he like to set us back? Nine million. We don't really need that, although he would be a good ball-playing centre-back. So we'll, uh, we'll put him one there. Okay, so not necessarily anyone else in here who's catching my eye. Let me know if there's anyone massively I'm missing out on here that I should go for. But uh, we'll move on to some of the individual players that have been suggested. Okay, first up is Johnny Evans at centre-back. He would be pretty decent. Uh, he's worth 9 million. He would be a step up, I think, from uh, Michael Dawson. Not a huge step up, but uh, he would be. Um, no, I'm not interested in him. So another one that we could go for, and this might be slightly controversial. It's Robin Van Persie up front. He's in decline, absolutely. He's 33 years old, but he was invaluable to Alex Ferguson in that league-winning side where he came in, he joined from Arsenal, he struck them to Premier League glory as the top scorer in the Premier League. Definitely worth a bid in for him. 81 overall, finishing 84. He's definitely lost a, a yard or two of pace. A few of those horses have bolted, but um, he would definitely be a good one. So that's one to look at. Now, Danny Welbeck, here's another one that's been suggested. He would be excellent. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to afford him. Um, but I'm going to try... Oh, no, I can't. But I'll put, we'll put him on the list. We've run out of people to deal with. He'd be interesting maybe on a loan. Looks like we could sign him, so that would be a good one. Now, Ben Foster at West Brom. He would be uh, an upgrade in terms of a keeper, absolutely. Uh, he's worth £10 million. We'll put him on the list as well. Obviously, he started his career at Man United. Now, Stephen DeFore as well is also one that's been mentioned. It was a bit of a tenuous link from one of uh, my bros on the Pez Fan Forum. Shout out, Pez Fan Forum. Um, mainly because Sir Alex once wrote him a letter when he injured himself, saying, just don't worry about it, Stephen. You're a great player. And uh, he's turned into an okay player. He would be a good box-to-box -box player, but we've got plenty of central midfielders, so actually, I think I'm going to leave him. Although he does look decent. Okay, well, I think that's enough for now in terms of transfers. Let's get into the second game. Now, before we do... Up against Sunderland, uh, the press have caught up with Alex Ferguson, who's playing around a golf. And they had a few questions to ask him about the relationship between him and now Sunderland boss David Moyes and uh, how things ended up for David uh, when he took the Man United job on. So, Sir Alex, how would you respond to people who say that actually you left David Moyes up shit creek without a paddle? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So, you sure? You sure you didn't fuck him over? I don't know. I think I'll do it there. All right, fair enough. So let's take a look at the team for today. So we've got a few new signings coming in. Davis is looking good and Robertson as well, the left back. They're both on upward blue arrows. Uh, Ember Carney, yeah, he didn't have a great game and it looks like his, uh, his form is slightly down. Who do we bring in? Now Lingard obviously can play as a centre forward. And he can play as a second striker as well. But I think today I'm going to give Henriksen a go. How does he look as a second striker? Yeah, he looks passable. Um, so we'll put him in there. It's the first start for Henriksen. No, actually, forget that. So I think instead we're going to put in Diamandi up front. We've not seen Diamandi yet. Let's take a quick look at his stats. Uh, he's a goal poacher, right-footed, good finisher. He's strong. Good body con body control, physical contact, 86. Good with his head, good in the air. Actually, he's a, he's a pretty decent player. May not need to sign another striker with him around. Uh, Jesse Lingard, obviously, out on the right today. He's a good passer. 
I know he was a, uh, Alex Ferguson was a huge fan of Jesse Lingard when he was uh, at United as a youngster. He tipped him for greatness. He's not quite fulfilled that yet. Actually, I found an interesting article with Rennie Mullenstein, obviously Alex Ferguson's uh, assistant coach or one of his assistant coaches during his time there, uh, saying that Jesse Lingard was going to be England's Iniesta. Now, that might have been a slightly big claim uh, that it was always going to be hard for him to live up to. But anyway, he's a, he's a good player. He's a good passer of the ball as well. So we've got good crosses on the right and left wing, which I'm pretty happy with. Look at our team spirit there. That's only 55. We need to build that up quickly. I think we'll struggle if we don't. Got Mbula coming into the middle, partnering Mason. He is a good, strong player. Good ball winning. Speed and explosive power, I think, are going to be the important things for him. But also a great passer. Actually pretty decent going forward as well. Um, so, yeah, and Fossey Mensah obviously as well, in at right back. Up against the Sunderland side. Jermaine Defoe and Victor and Ichibi up front. That's a dangerous combo of power and pace and finishing from Defoe. Kazri in the middle, who we considered buying. And uh, Rob Well, Larson and Ndong making up a central midfield three. It looks like we could maybe get a bit of luck down the wings here. So the wing play, as ever, is going to be a large part of what we try and do today. Let's get into it. So here we are. We're back at the KCOM Stadium again for Alex Ferguson's second game of his uh, Welcome to Hull series. There's Mbula, the new signing, jogging out. He's a big lad. The French Patrick Vieira, as many are calling him. He uh, is hopefully going to add a little bit of steel to our midfield, but alongside a bit of pace that Tom Huddleston didn't really offer when Tom Huddleston was traded out for Mbula and a little bit of extra cash on the side. Two other new signings today making their debut. It's Fosu Mensah and Lingard, both in from United, two highly rated youngsters who we hope are going to perform really well under the tutelage of Alex Ferguson. Turns away from Robwell into Jesse Lingard. Whips in an early cross. Diamande was in there, couldn't fall to him. Mbula, great foot in. And he keeps the possession going here for Hull City. Ryan Mason into his new partner. Good play from Lingard. Puts it in with the left foot. Oh, almost fell to Ryan Snodgrass. Edge of the box. This is dangerous here. Mbula tracking back really well. Ginelli but Mbula, that's great stuff. That's exactly what we've got him in there for. <sighs> Snodgrass, that's a poor tackle. He's not had anything to do in this game so far. He's straight in with the yellow card. That's disappointing from the Scotsman. Scotchman? Something like a Scotsman. Robertson into Snodgrass. That's nice. Mason gets it back. Kazri's there with a good tackle, but Robertson's still flying down the side. Balling towards Lingard. He can't get ahead on it. Ryan Mason with a good effort. Oh, that's a great effort from Mason. Strong tackle in Bula. Surely not referee. That was a beautiful tackle. That's never a card. Two cards already here. Alex Ferguson's got this hull side fired up. Some uh, questionable tackles. That looked all right to me, though. Mm, okay, Kazri did well, actually, to turn that into a foul. He spreads it wide to Fosu Menso, steaming forward. For the ball into Hernandez. Abel Hernandez, can he get on the end of that? He can't. Still, though, Hull City building. It's a good ball out to Snodgrass. He whips one in. Hernandez is there. Couldn't get ahead to it. Dawson, ball into Hernandez. He needs to turn and move into space. Hernandez gets a shot away. It's just wide of Minoni's post. First shot of the game there for Hull. We've really had to try hard to work any opportunities for a shot. It's a decent turn there away from the Sunderland defender. But uh, Diamandi not really making any good runs. And the shot was always just pulling wide. Half time nearly upon us. And we've struggled to create anything really. We've had a lot of possession. But we've not been able to do much with it. And it's half time. Well that was a tricky half. I'm not sure if we had more than one very, very long shot on target. We had a lot of possession, but working anything, proving difficult. Uh, I think that might be a case maybe of our team spirit being so low. I think that could potentially be the reason that we're not able to put together that last ball. 66% possession, though, means that we pr probably should be doing a lot better. In swinging corner from Ryan Snodgrass. Doesn't make it over the first man. Minoni collects that really easily, but it's fallen to Snodgrass here. Oh, couldn't get the shot away. Great tackle, Jesse Lingard. Snodgrass ball into Diamandi. Hits it! It's Diamandi! With his first goal for the club! And we're ahead 1 0 to Hull City. Ryan Snodgrass, that was an absolutely beautifully crafted ball in from the Scottish David Beckham. He found himself out on the right side and he's whipped that in. Just absolutely gorgeous for Diamandi. And the Hull City fans are going wild for this. 
Great tackle by Jesse Lingard. He's had a mixed game, but defensively he's been really strong. That's a great ball through to Diamandi. Almost looked like he messed it up. He slid in, putting it past. Vito Manoni in the Sunderland goal. And we're 1-0 up after a lot of pressure and a lot of possession. Diamandi, the goal scorer, coming off. Bringing on Jake Livermore here in the 70th minute. Trying to shore things up in the midfield. Dropping in Bula back into defensive midfield position. This is a dangerous position for Kasri to whip it in. And we know he's good from a set-piece opportunity. Davis comes out. Strong header, though. Great play there from Curtis Davis. Now Hernandez gets away. He's dribbling through the middle. Can he get the ball out? No, he can't. Is that a foul? No, it's not. Van Arnhill into Steven Pienaar. Oh, great play from Lingard again. He's been really strong defensively in this game. Oh, but once again, Hernandez takes a touch too many. You just can't get away with anything in those positions in Pez 17. As soon as you dribble it for any longer than... See, it's happened there to Defoe. And Bula out to Mason. Plays it back to Davis. We just need to keep possession here. Snodgrass looks up. He had a great pass for the goal. Robertson inside to Hernandez. He stayed on side. He has. Hits it with the right. Fall into Lingard with the header. Just wide. Jesse Lingard couldn't get his debut goal. Good tackle. Jake Livermore has won that back from Robwell. Now Hernandez makes a run through the middle. It's a good ball in from Livermore. Hernandez, can he make it too? And he can. Abel Hernandez with his first goal of the season. And in our second game of the Alex Ferguson era, it looks like we've got this one wrapped up. As Abel Hernandez makes it 2-0 here at the KCOM. Great, great goal there. Looked to be offside, but he just about managed to stay on. It was really well won back there by Jake Livermore. The substitute coming on, putting himself about. Slips that through. That's a great slide rule pass. It was a lovely finish with the outside of the boot, actually. Abel Hernandez was looking to cement himself as our first choice striker. Ball inside to Livermore. Keeps it moving to Fossu Mensa. Into the substitute, Emma Hannady. Tries to turn, and now they're out of position. Dawson overcommits there. It's a great ball for, through into Fabio Barini, but Davis gets back. Oh, it's a good finish by Barini. We might have spoken too soon here. The game is not yet over. I thought Davis has that covered. Fossi Mensa had over, overcommitted there at 2-0 up. And uh, Curtis Davis looked like he'd dealt with that. Couldn't get a foot and it was a great finish from Barini. We said he'd be the danger man. Three minutes left on the clock. We need to keep this going. Keep it together, lads. Come on. It's a good ball out to Manquillo again. This is dangerous here for Fabio Barini, the goal scorer. It's a good play by Snodgrass. Brings it out. And that's our first win of the season. 2-1. Alex Ferguson very pleased with that. Even he can't help but crack a smile as Hull City get off the mark. One win, one draw. Four points out of the first two games. That's a great, great start for the Alex Ferguson reign. I think we definitely deserve that today. It was a good performance all round. So 59% possession, three shots on target. Towards the end, we were able to uh, find a little bit more space. Attacking the uh, down the sides. It was eventually, it was a really, the first goal was a great goal. And the second one was hitting them on the break. And it was a good finish by our first choice striker, Abel Hernandez. Sunderland were able to get a goal back, but it wasn't enough in the end. It was getting a bit dicey. Diamandé had a good game. And as I've said, we may not need to recruit there necessarily with him as a backup. Uh, Van Persie, if we can bring him in on a decent free, maybe that's something to consider. Good debuts, I think, from Bula. Had a good first half. Fossu Mensa was potentially at fault for the, the, the goal, but other than that, he had a good debut. Jesse Lingard as well. Acquitted himself pretty well. And the whole City fans, I think, will be pretty happy with our signings so far. So there we go. 2-1. Excellent. And we're sitting in sixth place. Just in the Europa League spot. That's where we could uh, maybe be hoping to finish. At the end of this season. That would be a great result. Okay. So we've had a few negotiations coming in. And Aki Williams. The pacey winger. Uh, and Sean Maloney. Maybe some more money for him. And Klukas as well. That's good. We wanted to sell him. And Bacani. Now do we sell him? I mean that really depends on what comes up. El Mohamedi. He was a good player to bring on. You can play right back. Right midfield. I think we'll probably look to keep him. Now Klukas. Three million. He's definitely not getting in the team. We'll try and get a little bit more money out of that. And Maloney. Four million. Yeah, I'll take that. That's fine. A little bit of cash there. 14 million. 4 million in the salary. That's that's pretty handsome. So let's take a look at the Anaki Williams. 15 million. Well, that's not a surprise because he's a very highly rated youngster. Um, we don't have enough money for that at the moment. We would have to sell him Bacani. Um, hmm. Now, he's a second striker. Although his playing style is a prolific winger. He's a creator. 
but his passing stats are very low. His low passing is actually all right, 75, which is fine. I suppose that's what we need him for. His finishing is only 75 as well. He is rapid, absolutely rapid. Uh, not great body control, though. I'm, I'm struggling to understand what body control really means. I believe it is, you know, how you get your body in front of the ball to stop yourself being pushed off it. I don't know how that matches up with physical contact as a, as a stat as well. Um, we'll. We'll definitely go back and see if we can get any money off there. Looks like we might not be able to. Don't know if there's anyone that they might want to trade for him. Mbukani, maybe? I know. We'll see if we can get any money off. I'm not 100% on Inaki Williams. He's super quick. And I'm guessing speed might be important. But it does seem like the physical attributes outside of speed, like the body body control and physical contact. Although he's got good physical contact. Uh, they could be quite important. Van Persie, potentially. That'd be a good signing as well. And ZH. Yeah, I mean, he'd be great. Uh, I'd be willing to maybe dip in fairly extensively into our transfer budget to sign ZH. If that's how you say it, I'm not sure. Ooh, ZH and Bazur. Nothing happening there. But Van Persie, we could be on. As well as a potential centre-back cover in Cooper. Let's take a look at that. I mean, we could go back in for ZH, but we do need to uh, free up some some space for actually making other signings. Um, oh, so 22 million for Robin Van Persie. That's probably a little rich for our for our budget. Still waiting to hear from Inaki Williams. I think we can probably rule out Robin Van Persie at that price. We'll end that. I did not think he was going to be that expensive. That's crazy. We will have another pop at ZH. Uh, Bazaar, that's a problem. Not not too much of a problem. We've got cover at centre back and also in the middle. Now Cooper, 15 million they want for him. Wow, they definitely don't want to let him go. Uh, that's that's way too much as well. So I'm afraid no to all of them. Ch will um, see how that goes. And Aki Williams, hopefully we can do something there. Okay, we've had an update for Aki Williams. Let's take a look at that as well as Klukas. 13 million. I mean, that's um, pretty good value for a young player he can play. We would probably end up playing him as a second striker. Also, he can play out on the right or left. His finishing could do with improving. I'm going to wait and see, see what Zirich comes back as. So, I might try and uh, offer Danny Welbeck a loan deal. That'd be interesting. Uh, Alex Ferguson knows, knows him well. He's known him since... He was but a wee child, and uh, I think we can maybe offer him a little bit of time at Hull City to uh, recover from his injuries, get back to full full speed ahead, and then obviously Ferguson and Wenger, they know each other very well. They've had a troubled past, but ultimately a fairly good relationship now, so I think a loan deal for Welbeck would be understandable. You could sort of imagine that happening. Uh, we've got a few other things we can do. Um, we do need a keeper. I think it would be good to have a better keeper. Now, I am looking for a keeper, and I've gone back into Stoke using the Mark Hughes connection. Jack Butlin would be an incredible signing. So we'll go for a look at him. He's only a little bit better than Marshall, but he's only going to improve. And uh, his goalkeeping stat is 89, which is insane. Um, another great signing would have been Ryan Shawcross, but it doesn't look like we've got any chance of him. Um, Juve up front would be, I think, really good for our system. He's a great header of the ball. He's got a great jump to him as well. We're whipping in a lot of crosses. So I'm just curious as to how much that would cost. So I'm going to put in a bid for him as well. Okay, ZH, we can deal with him. But this is likely to be pretty expensive. Um, but it's going to be interesting though because he is quite a player. 42 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Mm, no. Okay, so ZH is out of the question. We'll just uh, very swiftly end that. Definitely can't afford 42 million. What we're lacking now is um, that sort of... Attacking midfielder, second striker that we've been looking for. Now, the one that came up in the scouts. I'm a bit disappointed with the scouts. Um, but the one that came up in there was Cabela. Who, you know, a Newcastle flop. Is that really what we want? He's looked to be quite expensive as well. He's a decent passer. What he does have is great body control and great physical contact. Which could be really useful in sort of holding the ball up. And then uh, getting play moving. Oh, we can't go in for him yet. So there's nothing we can do here. We're getting dangerously close to the uh, transfer deadline day. So uh, we'll do one more. One more today. I think that's all we've got time for. I don't think we're going to have time for a second game today, unfortunately. There will normally always be two games per episode. 
And today we're up against Southampton in our first away game of the season. But I think we're going to have to leave in that until Friday's episode. So thanks for watching. Sorry we couldn't get in two games today. As I said, there will normally always be two. But we spent a little bit too much time messing around with the transfers. We're getting close to a decent squad. I think we've got, you know, a replacement for Embracani we can sell. We'll either get Welbeck in or Juve. Uh, Inaki Williams looked like he'd be a versatile player we can play on the wing. And also as a second striker. We're missing that creative second striker that really we were looking for. Uh, and then, what else do we need? Let me know in the comments. Where are the weak links here? I think we probably need a reserve left back. Ideally, someone who can play at centre back as well. A keeper would be good. Let me know in the comments if you've got any suggestions. Other than that, next time we speak is going to be Friday, so I will see you in a bit.